Welcome back to War Thunder and welcome aboard the TA 154A1, which is a German rank 3 battle rating 4.0 interceptor slash heavy fighter. And let's talk a little bit about the stats and what it actually is. First of all, it has two 20mm MG151 with 400 rounds between them, that's a decent amount, and two 30mm MK108 with 220 rounds. That's still decent. And the one second burst mass is 10 kilograms, 10.02 to be exact, per second. The maximum speed is above 650 kilometers an hour at 6700 meters. Furthermore, it is relatively quick and has a decent climb rate. The cockpit, however, seems to be not completely 100% finished, but in my opinion, that's not as important as what this plane can do. And we are here on Sicily. And what do German planes being equipped with 30mm do on Sicily? They go for the tanks. And let's see if Gaijin has fixed anything in this respect. Heavy fighters are something that is kind of a support vehicle overall, or support plane rather. And there are no fish, nor meats, kind of. Because in, in War Thunder, when you have good climb rate and a really great maneuverability, you have a good fighter at your hands when we talk about single-seated, single-engine fighters, that is. There are a few exceptions, but overall it is relatively easy to make them work. Then we have basically the second branch of um, planes, that is the bombers. Bombers are a bit controversial in war thunder realistic battles, more so in arcade, where they actually dictate the outcome of the battle and also the battle length, which, which can be decided within minutes in arcade. And in realistic they are more known for actually climbing and, and lengthen the gameplay by an unnecessary amount. But that's not the only thing. This plane, as you can see, is still capable of, dis uh, of destroying the tanks here on Sicily, the AI con controls, from the front. And the one thing, the one comparison I want to draw is that it is the main competitor to the other German um, player-based designed plane the Heinkel 219A7 and it has a lower battle rating by 0 0.3 but on the other hand it also has two 30mm MK103 less giving it significantly less firepower and while this plane is cheap the Heinkel 219 is also not very expensive what about the maneuverability and roll rate? Well, the roll rate overall is great. The low speed handling is not the greatest, but I don't expect this from a German interceptor in the first place. However, what, what you should do here is kind of the first impressions, the first battle and just putting the plane to the test. This is not a representation what you could theoretically do. The first taste you might get later on. Sicily is also a map that is relatively hot so you can test out your engine overheating and your manual engine control and two surprises first of all The engines hold out relatively long in terms of overheat and are very easy to control with manual engine control the second thing is you have a second supercharger gear but I think it's only usable above 4,000 meters. But please keep this in mind. With most German planes, you don't have access to supercharged gear control in the first place. I critted here the Spitfire in a head-on, but sadly it was not good enough to bring him down. And as you could see, I couldn't turn with the Spitfire, but you really can't that you really can't expect this in the first place, in my opinion. However, it was worth a try.
and there were enough allies around, so I was not in immediate danger of getting shot down. But I nearly got guns onto him. And so, let's go back to um, taking on the tanks, this time from the rear. This match was quite heavy with bombers and certain heavy fighters on the German side. So, two tanks, and you might see that I have a very good profit in terms of silver lines. I have to admit, I put a 300% silver line booster and a 75 silver line booster on top of each other, reducing the effect of the second one by a bit. And this is a premium plane, and I also have a premium account. We will see how this will literally pay off later on. For the moment, I decided to go back to base and to just rearm because the 30 millimeters are what makes this ta what makes this plane tick at uh, lower heights when you attack ground units, in my opinion. And you could see my engine is slightly yellow, but I have no leak. I have no overheat issue. It seems to perform just well here we can see the cockpit again overall i like the cockpits and um yeah there we can see this achtung with something else written on it it is that low quality that even i as a german can't read it yeah so i'd like to see that being improved while i am not a simulator pilot i love to sometimes sit into certain planes cockpits and look around it just gives you such a better feel for for example when you have nothing to do but just close the distance for example to your airfield as you can see the reward is 2673 percent in terms of silver lines thanks to the boosters that's a hefty amount the next question is how durable is this plane well later on we will see a scene um, that is very strange and that is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this first battle because I have never seen something like this happening in War Thunder. I heard it from certain people that it is possible but I have never done it myself or you know have observed it myself and yeah you can see the nice handling kind of and let's see how easy it is or how difficult it is to land this plane. Now, the cannons serve here kind of as a cannon brake and high speed retract gear at 270 kilometers an hour. I retract them again and I got a split warning again for at 260 kilometers an hour. So keep that in mind. It is very strange. And then we also have a nose mounted landing gear. That's interesting. One question that I had in mind was, is it possible to land this plane on the engines, like for example an ME262? And it doesn't look like that, because the engines are not as uh, down below to the ground as the fuselage. By the way, the wing design is kind of strange in terms of whether or fixed. There are not many planes in War Thunder, at least uh, fighters or heavy fighters, that have this shoulder wing design. How does it affect the flight performance and overall performance of the plane? I don't really know, but it kind of reminds me of certain bombers, especially the Door 217s have kind of this appearance as well. Not quite, they have a longer nose, but you know where I'm going. So. We are refueled and rearmed. Let's go into battle again. And again, there you saw the warning for a split second. Again, at 260 kilometers an hour. So you have to be fast with the landing gear retraction at the start. Kind of strange, but I haven't ripped it off. I don't know when the gears actually do rip, but there is at least the warning. So now it's time to go back and try to either go for the tanks again or let's see how this plane climbs 
it was claimed that this plane was um, very capable of climbing and indeed when we have a look at it, it it's not too bad I definitely feel like um, I'm faster like in a stock F6 F5 N but um, again it's stock I have to try it out when it's fully spaded which may take a while The next thing is that I actually like kind of the engine sound, but that is just a personal opinion in this respect. And of course does not influence the performance of the plane. Now, I wanted to show you this plane because this is the second user made plane. And again, it is a German premium plane. And of course I bought it and um, because of the share revenue program that Gaijin has currently up and running, the designers of this plane or the creators, so to speak, they actually get a fair share of the income that Gaijin gets in terms of real money. So it's not like they get uh, golden eagles to their account and then that's it. So I support this idea. It gives the community itself the possibility to implement or to at least try to implement um, planes maybe even tanks into the game that they want to see for planes I guess we can safely say that it is it is a thing because this is the second one however if you want to ask me right now which one I prefer I say it's definitely the Heinkel 219. It has heavier armament. It has no real disadvantages in comparison to this one. And also it's a tier four premium. So it is worth in this respect more. Also the Heinkel 219 is also relatively cheap. Now this one, the Tau 154A1 is cheaper not by that much if I remember correctly and I want to have quite something out of my spent money so we are here now climbing and I wanted to look for this bomber that I saw earlier on however I lost contact to him I just saw him for a while as a black dot and now this um, P47 popped up for a split second and we can see that this guy in the bomber likes to chill at high altitude, which is nice, but I, I'm safe to say that not everybody likes that, especially when you have, have to face people like that. I'm not judging him, but I would highly advise him to just go into a custom battle and there he can try out how high he goes, but this kind of behavior is not the best, but it will change in a while. So now let's have a look how this engagement with the P47 will go. A friendly premium LA5 is engaged with him, but he doesn't take on the risk of the direct engagement. And I saw off the wing of the P47. I took the head on no matter what. I don't. I don't really care and now we come into the funny part his wreck rammed my left engine which is now black and smoking heavily not just is it overheating but also has a really drastic oil leak but I guess I think it was worth to just simply take him out and then we can see that the engine stops now Please pay close attention to what the engine actually does. I got told that you could restart engines. And, you know, restarting an engine in flight is possible as long as it is not damaged. However, when the engine is black, what can you do? I never could do it myself when I tried and then I see the Halifax and he is really high up indeed that's like six seven kilometers of altitude that this guy has at least that's my assumption 
what can you do in this situation? Now, obviously, I have um, the benefit of having a second engine. So without the shadow of a doubt, I will come back to the airfield as long as nobody shoots at me. And with the Halifax being the second or the being actually the last enemy player alive, I highly doubt that he will go into boom and zoom attacks on me. Just saying. And for a split second, I thought to myself, can I get this guy with just one engine? But there was no way. I tried it, how the plane behaves, and it doesn't behave too. Okay. Second engine running. All temperature and water are rising in temperature. This engine is now under power. Now I went into a dive and in a dive the plane accelerates up to higher speeds. So the airflow might have kind of restarted the engine. So if you know what's going on there, let me know in the comment section. The engine definitely is running by itself. But for how long? Because again, it is black. It is, I guess, kind of out of oil. I have still a bit of a smoke trail going on, but I'm not sure for how long. And obviously that is something that I want to put to the test. At this moment, I'm close enough to the airfield that I kind of, yeah, can begin to play around. I have to kill my speed anyways, remember, like 260 kilometers an hour landing speed, um, except if you want to break your landing gear. So yeah, and there it stops again. So it kind of was kept alive by the airflow. But as long as the but as soon as the airflow went under a certain strength, so to speak, the engine stops again. So was it really running? Because I had the feeling when I controlled it that the left engine was producing some uh, en energy. But now just the right one is running. But I cut the throttle anyways because I'm in landing approach. I, I put the gears down. Again, cannons as cannon brake. And touchdown. Sadly, no jingles landing for you guys. So, I never have seen this before. Even when in Beer 409s or Foggy Wolves, my engine was shot in mid air and just was black immediately, and I dove down. I personally never had the engine being able to restart itself, at least in fighters. Was there a patch that I missed or is this just for two engine fighters or has to be there a time where the engine has time to cool down before I can try to restart it with airspeed? Let me know in the comment section. Especially the sim pilots can probably tell me as they are usually more into the mechanics of the planes themselves. And here we start again. And at this moment, I thought to myself, well, the bomber is so high up, it has no value in trying to climb after him. So I can now destroy the ground units. And that brings me to the next problem. We are already like in the approaching the 20 minute mark in terms of battle length. That is a long time for one battle. And the next thing is, the boosters just last for 30 minutes. After that, you kind of must activate other boosters. But I don't think you actually can activate boosters in battle. Let me know if um, this is correct. This is not just a kind of a downside for the principle of enduring confrontations where, you know, the first half an hour is not really the time that you have a good income. By the way, where is, where is Enduring Confrontations? Where is it? 
I know it's supposed to be a test or first test, uh, so to speak, for the World War mode, but we haven't seen anything on that as well. I think it is very interesting when we have it, especially in combined battles. We have enough tank maps that provide a decent size, and I'm not just talking about maps like Kursk, where you just have to replace or you know change the spawn locations and you have a much bigger map but also for example we have Volokolamsk or uh, Port Novorossiysk where we have at the moment numerous iterations but the actual map is really big just think about enduring confrontation with tanks and some air support I'd like to see that and when we think about how ships in the future also could get implemented, lots and lots of opportunities. But that really doesn't help us in this battle, does it? So I'm currently approaching the last few tanks and let's see what we can get out of it. The British bomber actually said that he will land and then bail out. And I really did not trust him on that, to be honest. I thought he would choke. But we will see if he was just choking or not. However, we are currently um, already shredding the last few ground units that we are missing for victory. I destroyed two more medium tanks. The Ju the Ju-88 and one P-47 are actually busy pounding also some vehicles if they would wipe out all vehicles on one of the vehicle spawn points where we have three on such maps we would win or at least we would um, drain some points out of the enemy's point pool but that's it that's the first impressions on this vehicle it was nothing too dramatical but it feels like a solid plane it seems like um, having no real big drawback and we can see 305,000 silver lines due to the big boosts that we had and nearly 9,000 modification research points if I would research something it would be certainly more however at the end of the day I prefer the Heinkel 219 more firepower and a higher rank so I can even research jets if necessary so I got first place with over 8500 score points and I think that's a decent result and um, from my experience I'm pretty sure that you could repeat it like you could repeat those results in the Heinkel 219 which I actually prefer because it is higher rank but Although the Tau 154 is a new plane, it brings really nothing too drastically new to the table. But it's a nice plane to have, it's a nice plane to look at, and it is certainly no game breaker. So overall, there is nothing too special about this plane, in my opinion. And as a solid grinder for tier 2 to tier 4 vehicle, it might be worth the price and remember it is part of the Gaijin revenue program so the creators actually get a fair amount of the money that you spend in terms of golden eagles and they receive it then in real money anyways that's it for me today so thanks for watching thanks for listening please give this video a like if you did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other in the skies of war thunder